Hello everyone, this is Bob Roswick. This year I attended the 22nd Annual Black Hills Model Engineering Expo. It was held at the Fine Arts Building on the Central States Fairground in Rapid City, South Dakota on September 24th and 25th, 2022. Machinists from all over the regions presented with their model engines to show the public. We are treated to steam or compressed air engines as well as internal combustion engines. We saw hybrid engines, electric engines, and a few robots. Besides the model makers present, the full-size aircraft engine roared to life in the parking lot. Let's start with a wee bit of a walk around to get a flavor of what was on display. The format of this video is to show you as many of the engines as possible while highlighting some of the builders. In many cases, the builders of the machines were not present because they are out enjoying the show. It is my hope I can accurately ascribe the correct makers to the engines on display. But I must warn you, the boundaries from one maker to the next are not always clear. You might ask, what is my attraction to model builders? I'm an aspiring machinist. Actually, I'm more of an apprentice. These folks are the real deal. For my money, they are the most skilled machinists that I have met. The quality of their work is amazing, and the fit and finish is superb. Let's look around and get acquainted. Let's start by introducing you to Cliff Romick. When it comes to a model engine show, I describe Cliff as royalty. He may not be the king, but he's certainly a duke. I guess that'd make me kind of a court gesture. Cliff is prolific. He makes a lot of machines. When it comes to putting together a video, your work is cut out for you if you want to demonstrate what Cliff has done. So let's get started. When you start with Cliff's display, there's a few instructions that need to be followed. Fortunately, he wrote them down. They're there. You can look at them. Here is a two-cylinder engine with four pistons. The pistons face each other in the bore and combustion takes place at the top dead center between them. This is technology that was used for submarine engines in the Second World War. Fairbanks Morse was the major manufacturer of this type of engine. Here is a Nash gas engine. Built by the National Meter Company, New York, New York. It's 3 16th inch scale. This mill model is built by Cliff Remick. He did the model in 2017 and 18. Here's a rendering of Cliff's version of the 1917 Holt gas engine. It's got four cylinders uh, and was built in 2020. Here's a model of a 1906 Bruce Macbeth gas engine. The original engine was rated at 90 horsepower at 300 RPMs. Full-size engines were used to power air compressors and to generate electricity. The model was drawn by Doug Kelly and built by Cliff Remick. Here's a one-of-a-kind model gas engine. Cliff estimates this engine was produced sometime around 1900 to 1920. 
He purchased the engine in January of 2022. The seller he bought it from indicated he owned the engine for 35 years and had purchased it at a flea market in Hersey, Pennsylvania. The seller he bought it from also owned the engine for 35 years and had purchased it an, at an estate sale. He indicated the appearance at that time was quite old. I've done a great deal of research on the internet, no success in identifying what the, it might be a model of. After, after disassembly and inspection, I found it a very expertly cast machine model constructed by a skilled craftsman. Some of the components used are an indication that the model may have been built between 1900 and 1920. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this 1898 reproduction of a Nash engine. The detail is incredible. Cliff has a knack for painting, powder coating, and getting pieces to look very period, yet brand shiny new for their day and age. Before we leave Cliff, this model demonstrates Cliff's enthusiasm for small engines. This is a Chinese built inline engine that Cliff purchased. He's an enthusiast. He sees something like this. I think Cliff's basically helpless. He can appreciate its detail, its scale, and the engine runs just real nice. What did he do for a living? Oh, okay. <laughs> Ardeline brought us a sample of a solenoid engine. The solenoid is actually powered by electrical current. It pushes a rod that turns a flywheel. And here, this model has two flywheels. This is a very effective model and very smooth running. This is what's known as a beam engine. The engine has a piston with a shaft that connects to one end of the beam. The other end of the beam typically attaches to the flywheel. There also can be other attachments to the yeah, beam that control I, I the valve for the input up. and the exit of the st steam or the compressed air that runs the engine. This is a very interesting and, and quite an attractive engine. This is Art's Corliss motor. This Corliss engine or motor was actually built by Cliff Remick. Cliff had some problems with it. Art uh, took over the project from Cliff, actually uh, changed a couple of the eccentrics, lapped some valves, and got the machine to run. Corliss engine is uh, really notable for being a very efficient steam engine. What do you need? Mike Berge calls this his junkyard special. It has roller bearings, open camshaft, side rockers, lever start, air-cooled four-cycle engine. The camshaft is from a Briggs & Stratton. The crankshaft is from a weed eater. The valves are from Briggs & Stratton. Valve springs are from Ace Hardware. The valve rockers are a brass ground strap. The cylinder block is a piece of cast iron shaft. The crankcase is aluminum scrap. The flywheel is brass print roller. 
and the air shroud is a brass kick plate. Good job, Mike. Mike brought some great models with him. He has a model of a diesel engine as well as a steam engine. The diesel engine is cut out and when you move the mechanism it shows you how things work. It also has a nice LED effect that shows you the explosion as it occurs in the cylinder to drive the, the engine. With this design is also include a schematic that's all labeled that shows you how the engine runs and the components that are used to make it all happen. After that, there's a nice video of the whole thing running. Diesel engine. Mike also brought his model of a steam engine. It also is a cutaway. It shows a nice diagram of the valve and how it works. It's all color coded. It shows you when air can enter the cylinder and exit the cylinder and pushes the piston to drive the flywheel. Underneath the model is a nice diagram of all the components that make up a steam engine. This is followed of a video of the whole mechanism in action. Lovely. Yeah. What, no lights? Mike prides himself on making machines out of old scraps. Here is a hot air fan uh, made from a variety of objects. This is a Yellow Jacket Square 4. It's a marine engine with four cylinders, four cycle, twin crankshafts, one four lobe camshaft, eight side valves, and it's water cooled. I'd like to thank Mike for bringing his machines to the show. And here we have Edgar Hughesman. Edgar reports that he's from the Funny Farm. Edgar stacked his table with machines that were all purring away. He has one of the most impressive displays. Probably his prize presentation is his son Dennis. He and his son Dennis, who has followed in this hobby, have made machines together and separately. I teased Edgar. He believes in lubrication, and if you look at his machines, he knows how to use it, and he gets it on there. This beam engine is a joint project between Dennis and Edgar. I think Dennis said that he tightened a screw on it, if I recall the story correctly. Here's some slow motion of one of Edgar's machines in action. And here's some more beautiful slow motion of a machine in action. How you doing, Edgar? This machine here looks like it's been around the block. Dennis Huseman brought three of his engines. Two were complete and one is just simply a plan. This engine here is an opposed steam engine or compressed air engine. The wonderful thing about it is that he got it off the internet. He did not have to pay anything for it. 
And if you notice, he put some acrylic windows in the valves slides. So you can actually see the action of the valves on the side, just above the shaft of the motor. This is a fantastic demonstration of model building at Black Hills Dennis is also working on a twin cylinder design. This motor is beautiful. He has it painted up. Uh, it's a V twin uh, compressed air slash steam engine. Uh, and it's just uh, turned out to look really nice. I met Mike Bloom at the Western Minnesota Steam Thrashers reunion in Rolog, Minnesota. Mike has a knack for putting together tiny engines. One of my favorite video skills is to roll my big old fat thumb past one of his motors because a lot of them are about that size. Mike also has a knack for building tiny tools. Mike builds tiny owls, tiny scrapers, tiny anvils, tiny saws and hammers and other tools and has them on display. It's a very fun display to look at. And Mike's a good showman. He has good lighting. He has good technique. His plumb bob display is excellent. And he even has a bit of humor. If you notice one of his calipers, it's actually two legs that you can measure distance between the inside diameter of a tube or a hole. to take a moment to acknowledge Village Press. Village Press provided us with free issues of their magazines, Home Shop Machinist, as well as Digital Machinist. In addition, we had a lottery or a drawing for a one-year subscription to either magazine. Lastly, Village Press provided us with Machinist reference cards, which were taken by both staff, machinists, and guests of the show. Thanks again to Village Press and all that they do to promote this hobby. I'd also like to thank the vendors that showed up to the show, one of which was Gary Martin. Gary's forte is a pattern maker, but frankly, I think he's better at engaging customers as they walk by his booth. Gary makes flywheels and a couple of engine kits, among other things. He's also an expert woodworker and does do teaching in that regard. I'd like to thank him for coming to the show. That ends part one of the 22nd annual Black Hills Model Engineering Expo. We've got a lot more to show you and there's a lot of interesting machines left, left to look at. Please join us in part two.